Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming in the session. So we'll be presenting on OpenSAC Kubernetes integration, uh, what is left. Uh, in this presentation, we will not be specifically talking about OpenStack things that, on to, uh, I mean that OpenStack running on top of Kubernetes or Kubernetes on top of OpenStack. Instead, we will uh, specify an area in which uh, still work is required. So moving ahead. Uh, my name is Javesh Kodhari. Uh, and IRC, you can catch me on Jim Anonymous. And I work for NEC Technologies. And uh, I'm Oscar Motohiro from NEC Solution Innovator. I was Magnum Core Reviewer and, uh, uh, until uh, last month. So agenda of this presentation is uh, we'll be talking about overview uh, in which we'll uh, have a small details about Kubernetes and OpenStack and the overview. Then we'll be talking about OpenStack Kubernetes integration uh, in which we'll talk about uh, what are the integration points and how it could be integrated. Then we'll have a small demo on OpenStack working on top of uh, Kubernetes. And then we'll uh, list down the gap and missing features. So over here. I'll not dig into the detail of Kubernetes and OpenStack in this uh, slides. Uh, we'll just go through a couple of slides to uh, get the concept. So what is Kubernetes? So for, for that, we'll first have to understand what is containers. Uh, containers are uh, simply lightweight environments, uh, Linux kernels. And it uses technologies like namespaces, uh, secure groups, CH roots, SC Linux, and various other features provided by a Linux kernel. And uh, next, we'll move to Docker. Uh, Docker is a platform for managing these containers. And it's, uh, it uses libnetwork lib specification. And it has many features for uh, packaging images and running in containerized environments. So Kubernetes is an orchestration engine uh, which uses uh, orchestration tools uh, like for lifecycle management. And it's derived from the word Hellswan. Uh, and it's com completely open source, uh, mainly driven by Google. And it runs everywhere, like in public cloud, private cloud, on bare metal. And it has specific components uh, listed. Like the major ones are nodes. Uh, they usually use the terms nodes, in which we have a master node. Master node is the one uh, which is usually the controller one. By controller, we mean that it has all the controllers, either replication controller or deployment controllers. And apart from that, we have schedulers on the management node or the master node. A scheduler schedules the pods on various nodes uh, as per the uh, scheduler configurations. Like We could have custom schedulers also now. Then we have API server, which is the main part of Kubernetes control plane. Then we have worker nodes on which uh, all the pods are usually scheduled. We have two specific components work, uh, running on worker nodes. We have kubelets and uh, the container runtime. Container runtime usually consists of the uh, Docker, RKT, et cetera. And we have kubelet uh, as an agent of Kubernetes running on worker nodes, which usually communicate with API servers to uh, manage life cycles of the pods. So uh, what are pods? Uh, pods is a group of containers. Uh, it's an atomic term in Kubernetes. Uh, and then we have services. Services are used for uh, pods discovery, identification, and locating where are the pods located. We have uh, labels and proxy. Uh, labels are usually used to identify pods or group the pods into specific categories. We have a proxy to talk with the pods. Uh, it acts as a load balancer. Then we have an ETC daemon, which is a cluster store, which is used for uh, storing keys and uh, values. And it maintains all the maps related to that. Yeah, so moving ahead. Uh, we have this uh, architecture diagram of Kubernetes, which shows a master node. And, and then we have worker nodes here specified. Usually, the master node consists of API server, which have the Kubernetes API uh, controller running. And then we have schedulers and controllers, which schedules and controls the deployments. We have a etcd store, uh, which is distributed store. 
and we have worker nodes and like uh, kubelet runs on every worker node it has a worker node has a proxy and we can see that all the pods are scheduled here so all the uh, communication is done between kubelets and kubernetes api through uh, through this etcd score or they could directly pull these or uh, they directly interact with each other through kubelets so moving ahead uh, we every everyone knows that what is openstack but i'll just list down what's openstack and OpenStack is a cloud computing project. We all know that it's completely open source. It's follow open as its main protocol. And it empowers users to use various uh, range of resources, like to manage compute, to manage storage, and to manage networking. And it provides a wide range of projects to control them. So it's massively scalable, and it's easier to implement than other cloud providers. And it has a benefit uh, that a user could deploy on its own machine, and it could be used as either in private cloud or a, as a public cloud. Yeah, so. so this is the architecture of OpenStack we usually see. It has a compute node, networking node, and a storage node. All are controlled by OpenStack. And usually, interaction of all these services are done through a REST API, in this case. And we have a start, standard hardware on top of which all of these services are deployed. So we'll be talking about OpenStack integration. So there are several ways in which OpenStack Kubernetes integration could be carried out. Yes, so. Okay. But why OpenStack Kubernetes? First, we'll go through it. Uh, because we have to mention a reason why are we using or why are we integrating any component with OpenStack. So OpenStack provides a programmable infrastructure for everything. So Kubernetes uh, fits very good with OpenStack. And it could be used both as running OpenStack as an application, or it could be used on top of OpenStack. In, in case of OpenStack running on top of Kubernetes, it, OpenStack could use features of containers, uh, like lifecycle management of Kubernetes, and many others. So these are the three usual ways we see. And there are also mix and matches of all these three. First is like OpenStack on top of Kubernetes, in which OpenStack is, uh, sorry, Kubernetes on top of OpenStack, in which Kubernetes is deployed on top of OpenStack machines. Like uh, OpenStack machines, we mean it could be a virtual machine or a bare metal node. But usually, Magnum do it through uh, in virtual machines only. Uh, second, we have OpenStack on top of Kubernetes. So this is the usual case of projects like Cola, OpenStack, Helm, Cola, Kubernetes, Cola, Ansible, in which OpenStack is packaged inside containers. Uh, using the OpenStack architecture, containers also uses microservice architecture, which suits very good with OpenStack. So OpenStack services are containerized and then deployed on various nodes. And, and then orchestration and all the management is done through Kubernetes. So another way is that. And third is run side by side, which means that not only running VMs or containers, but instead running VMs and containers. That means uh, VMs and containers running side by side and communicating with each other, either on bare metal, or it could be nested containers also, like containers running inside VMs. So we'll be talking mostly about uh, Kubernetes on top of OpenStack, and then we'll List the gaps, what is left. So, so uh, first, I talk about Kubernetes on OpenStack use case. This will cover most use cases. For example, web application, web application, social games such as Pokemon Go, and so on. But, but before I explain this first, I need to answer some question. Why not remove OpenStack? Why run containers on OpenStack? Indeed, if container is just a kind of virtualization, why OpenStack is needed under container layer? The simple answer is uh, 
container is a bundle of application and its environment, not a virtual machine. So container still needs a computing resources, net, networking resources, and storage resources. This figure shows relationship between OpenStack and Kubernetes. As you know, Cinda provides storage resources for containers. Nova provides computing resources. Neutron provides networking resources. Looking at this figure, integration seems easy, but problem is the mismatch of lifestyle of container and VM. Container life cycle is very dynamic. We cannot decide which Nova instance will have my container. It means we can't decide which Nova instances should be attached to the volume. It means we can't decide how to connect container via neutron network. That's why Kubernetes has the concept of a cloud provider and storage class. Cloud provider, which is a module, which provides an interface for managing TCP load balancer and networking routes. It is possible to create a custom cluster without implementing a cloud provider. And not all part of the interface needed to be implemented depends on how flags are set on various components. So this is an interface of cloud provider. And seven pro methods are defined, but some methods are not implemented on OpenStack. In this presentation, I focus these two inter interface, load balancer and routes. Implementation of these methods use OpenStack Neutron to enable outside of Kubernetes cluster to container con connection and container to container connection. Kubernetes in itself doesn't care how connect pod to pod across nodes. Inside node, pod can communicate each other using bridge called CBR0. So implementation of RAS method will enable routing of pod network. But how? Each worker node has its own pod network, which is assigned by Kubernetes. So just adding routing rule routing rule to neutron router is enough. That is RAS method doing. In this slide, worker 01 node has 10.244.1.0 network, and worker 02 node has 2.0 network. So pod 2 can connect pod 3 using this rule. Uh, But one notice, to enable this routing, we must add our address option to the neutron port. Neutron knows that the IP address of VM and drop packets which have incorrect IP address to protect IP spoofing by default. Due to this protection, the packet having pod IP address will be dropped. That's why this allowed address option is needed for neutron port. And load balancer method. You know, Kubernetes has service resource. And there are three types of service. Uh, these are cluster IP, node port, and load balancer type. Cluster IP service expose the service on a cluster internal IP. Choosing this cluster IP makes the service, service only reachable, reachable from within the cluster. This is a default service type. A node port exposes the service on each node's IP address at a static port. A cluster IP service to fit the node port service will root is automatically created you'll be able to connect, uh, contact the node pod service
from outside the cluster by requesting node, node IP address and node port. So load balancer exposes the service externally using a cloud, cloud provider's load balancer. Node port load balancer when routes are automatically created. So this slide shows what cluster IP service is doing. Usually, client of this service is inside of cluster, and client access to cluster IP address. Then IP tables denotes access uh, actual pod address, so client can access to correct pod via cluster IP. And this slide shows uh, what node pod service is doing. Usually, client of this service is outside of cluster, but inside same tenant network. Node exposes its port to provide access point and map to cluster IP. Then client can connect to pod via cluster IP and node port. So this is service type load balancer. Client will access pod via load balancer. This load balancer will be set, by, uh, set up by cloud provider. Uh, and also member of load balancer are uh, also managed. I'll show you the demo later, which resources are created by service type load balancer. And next, storage integration. Kubernetes has persistent volume and persistent volume claim. This provides an API that abstracts details of how storage is provided from how it is consumed. A persistent volume and persistent volume claim can have a class, which is specified by setting the storage class name attribute to the name of a storage class. Storage class have a provisioner that determines what volume type is used. So Cinder is supported by storage class. Uh, this is an example of a storage class manifest. We can specify Cinder volume type and availability zone as well. <coughs> Once you define the storage class, you can use storage class in persistent volume and persistent volume claim. This is a definition of persistent volume claim. See storage class name. This is defined by storage class in previous slide. To enable cloud provider, Kubernetes requires a cloud config file. This config file includes information about authenticate and which network is used by load balancer and which router is used by routing. Okay, I'll show you the demo about OpenStack cloud provider. This diagram is uh, a this is a diagram of our de demo environment. We have three nodes, and one is master node, and two is worker nodes. These nodes belong to neutron subnet and also has pod network. First, uh, about pod network. So confirm current, I confirm current routing. Uh, so I, 
In this environment, we have three nodes. One is worker, uh, one is master, and uh, two is worker node. So, see the routers. It has a routes uh, to pod network. So, this IP address is for uh, master node. This is a worker node. Uh, these are worker node. And this node has a uh, own pod network. Master has a uh, 0, 0.0. Worker is a uh, 1.0 and 2.0. So then, if I as a new no worker node, this last will be uh, added. So I as a new at worker now. Uh, I already set up uh, one Nova instances. It it has uh, it uh, has. Uh, one seven uh, one seven two point one six point two point one three three IP address. So I'll install Kubernetes worker to this node. This script uh, copies the uh, uh, install script to uh, uh, worker node, and uh, then Kubernetes is installed. So I check the Kubernetes node. Ah, uh, not ready. Unfortunately, uh, currently, Kubernetes uh, cloud provider, OpenStack cloud provider, has a bug. Uh, in that is that has a token issue. Uh, token can't refresh automatically. So I I must restart control, uh, Kubernetes controller. So then I check the node again. OK, worker node was added. So then I check the uh, neutron port, a uh, neutron router. OK, <laughs> please see this line. Uh, worker 03 node root is added. So. so I can check the uh, this routing is working correctly. I uh, create a uh, five ports to Kubernetes cluster. Hmm. Ah, sorry, I already created the port, so.
I can check the pod. Okay, uh, five pods were deployed. Then, as uh, I log into front end pod, this is in worker 03 node. Check the IP address. This port has a uh, 3.3. So I'll pin to uh, another pod that was located in worker 01. Okay, so uh, pin is uh, I can pin successfully. So it means uh, pod, pod can connect to connect, connect uh, across the node. So <coughs> next is I demo about load browser. This is our uh, service load balancer definition. And uh, this load balancer load balance uh, previous pods I created. Okay, so this service will create a load balancer on OpenStack, so I can check the load balancer using neutron command. Okay, pending created. And also, I, we can check front end service. Uh, please see the uh, node port and endpoints. Uh, uh, <coughs> service load balancer type has a node port and uh, endpoints. Endpoint is a pod IP address and port. A node port is a, a worker nodes port. So we can also uh, connect to uh, these types using node port and endpoints. Okay. So checks load balance uh, this service again. Okay. Okay, load balance uh, this IP address. So we can access this service using this IP address. So check the, check this IP address. And the export uh, the response the uh, uh, the export response via a load balancer. So it means load balancer worked. 
Okay, uh, so that's a, that is a cloud provider demo. So please uh, continue this session. Yes, sir. Thanks for the demo. Uh, so we'll be discussing what is left now. So run side by side. So this is the major area which needs uh, more and more improvement because we have seen that OpenStack on Kubernetes and Kubernetes on OpenStack. Uh, there are many projects working on that, like Magnum or Cola. But much work is required to achieve this because there are many problems, like overlay problem and uh, many other problems which are introduced by using uh, different approaches. So we have to find approach to run side by side effectively. Yeah. So this is the open stack diagram. Um, we have like bare metals uh, running with virtual machines, running with containers. This n diagram shows that all these in, uh, ecosystems are running uh, parallel to each other. But this doesn't show, like, how are these connected? So we'll be going to see, uh, like, what approaches are used to, what approaches could be used to connect them. So, uh, but before we go on, we we might ask a question like, why would we, uh, why do we need containers and VMs together? Uh, so containers and VMs has its own pros and cons. Like containers have, uh, containers are lightweight and provides faster boot time, uh, have small kernel, doesn't require OS. And VM has its own, like it has security groups and it has other advantages. So we cannot eliminate uh, anything, like neither can we remove containers uh, nor VMs. So we have to use them together uh, to achieve an environment uh, suitable for our operators. So there are two cases, like Running side by side is one thing, and running nested is another. So both of these uh, have a common solution. Uh, with, there is a project in OpenStack called Courier, we're working on this. Uh, by using Courier, uh, we could take both of these advantages at the same time using that layer. So how do we merge containers and VMs? As we talked, like, Containers and VMs, uh, connecting both of these have a single problem, uh, that's networking. There are many others, like storage and all, but we are only going to talk about networking. So a very famous saying uh, is don't reinvent the wheel. So don't use the networking options uh, created by yourself. Yeah, there are uh, many networking options available in the market. So you could simply use them or you could simply build your car on top of the wheels. So Courier is a project that leverages the power of Neutron and hard work done by the Neutron community, and it could use all its plugins. So Courier is the project which bridges the gap between containers and OpenStack. So it, it takes containers networking and bridges it to the Neutron APIs uh, so that they could be used at the same time. So Courier provides these options. Uh, that's an integration bit, as we talked about. Uh, it provides integration between the Neutron and the containers. It has an OpenStack community for that to support uh, all the issues faced by the people trying that. It uh, leverages OpenStack support in the existing uh, ecosystem. It has quicker path for to Kubernetes for users of Neutron networking, already familiar with Neutron networking. And it avoids double encapsulation problem uh, for containers running on top of OpenStack because using Flannel or any other solution poses a, another problem of encapsulation in which there is an overlay network like Flannel uh, already running on top of uh, OpenStack Neutron. So to reduce that problem, if your containers are running on top of OpenStack, you could directly use a courier project to bridge the gap. So this is a diagram showing uh, how the Magnum try, tried to solve the problem of overlay. Uh, it just used the flannel overlay network. 
So in Flannel overlay, we have two VMs, and there are containers running in each VMs. So if they want to try to communicate over the OpenStack network, that's Neutron, uh, they'll do it through Flannel. So if the Flannel networking is used, Flannel would create its own networking layer on top of an OpenStack Neutron uh, service. So this poses a problem of double overlay. Uh, double overlay is uh, very difficult to debug, and it has its own challenges, and reduces, reduces the network efficiency. So in order to avoid such overlays, uh, we have a component uh, like Courier, uh, which is working on all these container orchestration engines. So Courier solution. Uh, there are two projects in Courier right now, like Courier uh, Lib Network and Courier Kubernetes, which uses Courier Library. Courier Kubernetes is for Kubernetes, which uses the Kubernetes networking and converts it into Neutron APIs. And Courier Lib Network is for Docker Swarm, uh, so it could be used with Docker Swarm. And container solutions could be uh, used at the same time. Both of these could be used at the same time uh, with Courier so that it could provide a common interface for Neutron, to, so that all the containers could talk to each other in the multi nested environment or multiple uh, COEs environment. So Courier leverages the trunk pool personality. Uh, by that, we mean that if containers are running inside VMs, it could directly communicate with uh, other containers. Uh, with If they are have in the same subnet, they, they still have the security intact. So they are in different VLAN segments. And apart from that, it uses all the advanced features of Neutron, uh, like Neutron community has already worked on very advanced features, like security groups, QNS, and load balancing. So it provides that every, every service do not have to find solutions to bridge the gap for containers. So Courier could be used directly for as a uh, plugin for uh, as an abstraction layer for containers and Neutron, and it could leverage all these. So, in Courier, we can, uh, as we talked about, that we we can communicate with VMs and containers, and containers as well as other containers. Or uh, there could be many options like that, without the problem of uh, double abstraction or double overlay. So. So this is the Courier Kubernetes architecture in that it has a controller. Uh, the Neutron is uh, listed in the background in green color. And it has an API server. So Courier controller watches the API server for all the events. And it uses annotation uh, to annotate the specific resources it wants. And it uses, uh, it calls Neutron's API through binding or port bindings. And do the configurations as required by the ports so, uh, to bring all the ports in the same uh, network or different networks as needed by the uh, operator. So we have a worker node on which kubelet and ports are installed. We have a courier CNI driver for Kubernetes, which will uh, watch all the events of Kubernetes API server as well. And courier CNI driver interacts with uh, OVS, or there could be any other, other controller. and it. Uh, contact, uh, consistently interacts with Neutron agent uh, to create any ports or routers. So uh, Courier, as we talked about, provides both of these solutions, like running side by side, uh, as well as nested containers. So there is a very rapid growth in Courier community in these years, and we think that it would be uh, more in coming few years. Uh, and with uh, with solutions like trunk port and other functionalities being pushed by the courier community, uh, we think uh, running side by side is uh, now also possible with this solution and on top of OpenStack. Yeah. So uh, we'll summarize everything we have talked about. Like we have talked about Kubernetes on OpenStack, uh, which is using the cloud provider configuration and of the Kubernetes itself. So Kubernetes provides a pluggable interface, uh, as we have seen. This uh, integration will uh, cover almost all use cases, uh, like 
all the major use cases of uh, Kubernetes and OpenStack integration is covered in the first scenario only. Uh, next is OpenStack on Kubernetes. Uh, this majorly involves like services, OpenStack services, containerized, and Kubernetes managing all these services. And the third part is OpenStack and Kubernetes. So which means uh, using your best networking solution to bridge the gaps between container environments and virtual machines. Thank you. So if you have any questions, please. Can you go back to the courier diagram, please? So in this example, the uh, worker node can be a, a, a bare metal machine. It doesn't have to be a virtual machine. Uh, like currently, it has to be a virtu virtual machine only. It has to be a virtual yeah, machine. Yeah, right. So in the case uh, containers are running natively on a bare machine, right. does courier, can courier help uh, bridge the gap? Yeah, yeah, like there is a community called Zun you must have heard about. Uh, so Zun is already working with Courier, uh, which, which which is trying to do the same. What is it called, Zone? Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Adam Young. I work on Keystone. I know that Kevin Fox has done a bunch of work on Kubernetes and uh, Keystone integration, and I'm just wondering if there are. Uh, if there are gaps there and what you kind of need for help on um, either having uh, Kubernetes services call into OpenStack services or the other way around. So I think you are uh, specifically talking about cloud provider .go file and Kubernetes repo. Uh, is that so? I'm actually, I know that he's done some work along the lines, but I'm actually more interested in the, the workflows that you have here and the ones that you've hit against where um, something running in Kubernetes needs to talk to an OpenStack service and thus needs to get Keystone credentials and, and support that way, or the reverse. Um, and being able to keep the, um, the authorization view of what's going on there in sync between the two systems. Yeah, because uh, the case you're talking about would come in the first case, uh, that's Kubernetes running uh, on top of OpenStack environment. So in that case, it'll use the authorization by Keystone. Uh, in other cases, uh, it will use a different mechanism. Like, it will still use Keystone, but it has uh, different mechanisms to interact with uh, Keystone and get the authorization. So, yes, we can talk in detail uh, about what are the gaps left. So you think it's, it's pretty well where it needs to be, or is there more work that needs to happen there? Uh, there is uh, work required, and okay. there are already patches for that. Okay. Uh, and Kubernetes repo only. Cool. Yeah. One more question, please. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> we've talked about different um, subsystems and uh, novelties. Uh, what's the current state of affairs? So um, let's say Newt and uh, Okata. Uh, do we already have Cur available for them? Do we have um, this uh, VLAN tagging for Neutron available? And what is Magnum using as a mechanism? Uh, yeah, like we have in a Carter release, uh, there is a Neutron Trunk support already launched. And uh, there is a demo also on Courier's uh, documentation. We can, you can try uh, on uh, creating trunk ports and communicating with ports inside VMs or uh, outside VMs. So like there is already trunk support. And with Magnum integration, there is still work on. But uh, Magnum community's work is still uh, not completed, like Magnum integration is still left. But at least with, with the cutter, we can already try this out. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. So, any more questions? So, thank you very much. <laughs>